Good evening, uh, Shield Creek Church family. And welcome to our Wednesday night uh, Bible class, a Bible study. Uh, this week, we're going to be talking about walking with God. We're going to be talking about walking with God, and we just want to look at some things uh, and, and discover or uh, see what the Bible says in this. And, and I would encourage you to study this uh, yourself as we talk about this and also go through and, and see what else you can add for your own spiritual growth. Because it's all about us growing and growing together and, and growing individually uh, and, and increasing our faith. And so, but we want to talk about walking with God. And so, <clears throat> in talking about walking with God, uh, two main scriptures that come to mind that we want to want to look at and talk about. One is Genesis chapter uh, 5, verse 24, when it says, In it walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. So Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. Another one is Genesis chapter nine. I mean chapter six, verse number nine. It says Noah was righteous man, a righteous man, and a perfect in his generation, and Noah walked with God. So we want to talk a little bit about walking with God and what separated these. For Enoch, as we know, as you study him or study a little bit about him, as we know about him. The, the main character, the main thing we know about him is, or characteristic we know about him is that he walked with God and God took him. He didn't see death the way that uh, we will see death or a lot of us will see death and, and, and die in that way. And so God took him up and, and blessed him uh, in a different way. And so when we talk about walking with God, we want to talk about what that really looks like or what that really means. Uh, also, to be a Christian, uh, and gain heaven, we must know that we have to walk with God. We can't get into heaven no other kind of way but walking with God. Then we also want to just think about and, and, and ponder uh, this evening uh, what it means to walk with God in God's commands. Or, or it means that, not what it means, but it, it also means to keep God's commands and his ordinances. Uh, the first example, or one example we have of that would be in Luke chapter 1. Verse number six, uh, Luke chapter one, verse six, when it says, uh, and they both uh, were righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinance of the Lord, blameless. And these are talking about John's parents, uh, Elizabeth and Zacharias. And so saying that they walked with God and they kept his commands and they stayed with his ordinances. And, and so it's important that as children of God, that we don't pick and choose what we want to take from God, but we we take the whole package and we do the whole thing. Uh, and so also I want you to realize or understand this evening that the man who walks with God walks on a higher plane of life. And so what I mean by that is when you understand what it means to walk with God and when you walking with God, truly walking with God, then there are some things that you do in your life that has an impact on other people in their lives, but not a negative impact, a positive impact. Because God never came into this world or never sent Jesus into the world, never created the world to have a negative impact on anyone's lives. And so even uh, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, God never meant for it to be evil uh, in the garden. Sin brought evilness in. And so in our lives, whenever sin is around, whenever sin comes up, that's what brings evil in. But God's intentions were never... Uh, uh, when we walk with him or his intention was never for to bring evil. His intention was never to, to, to create a, a harm in other people's lives. It's always been to bless other people's lives. And Jesus said, I come that, that you may have life and may have it more abundantly. So even Jesus dying and coming was so that we would have an abundant life of living. Uh, and so he died on the cross for that. And so as children of God, as Christians, as brothers and sisters, we should not make someone else's life quote unquote, a living uh, hell because of our own uh, 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 way of thinking. And so we should make sure that what we line up with God with, because God's the only one that has a hell to put us in. And so it's not my job to make anyone else life live in, live in hell because God's the only one that can put us in hell. And he's the only one that created a hell for us to be in. But his intention was not for us to go to hell his intention was to place the devil there because the devil was rebellious and would not, would not come back to him, would not walk with him any longer. And so he made a pit for him and his angels. 
and, but he never intended for mankind and for us to be in that pit. He always intended for us to be able to walk with him and to be, uh, uh, be able to be saved that one day we be reunited with him in heaven. And so one of the first things we want to look at as we talk about walking with God is uh, there's a different way to walk. There are different ways to walk. And, and so uh, when we look at uh, Psalms, chapter 1, verse number 1, the Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. And so if you find yourself walking, or it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the seat of sin sinners or sit in the seat of the scornful. So when you find yourself sitting and standing among sinners and you find yourself getting counsel from ungodly people and, 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 and conversating with ungodly people, and, and when you find yourself sitting in the seat of the scornful, then you know you're not walking in line with what God would have. Because he says, blessed is the man that does not do these things. And so if my whole intent, if my whole being, if my character, if my integrity, the person that I am is getting counsel from people who are not godly, people who, who are not upright with God, then I, I, I stand in, in, in a distance from God and walking with him and what it means. And we'll see this more so in the scriptures as we go through this study. Not only that, but Next, look what it says in Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15. And it says, Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. And so God wants us to understand that good understanding, he gives you favor. So sometimes uh, it takes just listening to people. It takes just, just understanding what people are. Did you gain better understanding of what they're going through or, or their situations? But also talking about walking with God a better understanding of God. You know, a lot of times we have our biases and we have our own opinions and we, we get caught up in our own way of thinking. And so we don't even allow the counsel of God to dictate how we think. We don't even allow the counsel of God to change our minds in the way that we think and our, our ill begotten wills, if you will. And so, but he lets us know here that good understanding gives us favor. And so we, in the time and day we live in as a church, individuals in our communities as families as husbands as wives as children we all need to get counsel or to get favor from god and so if we get understanding from god god will give us favor from him the bible says get knowledge get wisdom but all you get get understanding so it's important that we get understanding from what god would have for our lives and we continue to try to walk with him another way that it talks about walking or, or that, that things can be different different ways to walk it's Proverbs chapter 12 and verse number 15. Uh, there's a lot of good fruit in Proverbs. A lot of just wisdom and knowledge and a lot of virtue and a lot of things that if you just apply to your life uh, uh, will help your life and give you a better uh, satisfactory in life. But Proverbs 12 and 15, it says, The way of a fool is right in his own eye, but he that is wise uh, hearken unto counsel. And so... Sometimes, you know, we, uh, especially men, you know, I'm a man, so I, I say that, you know, I had to learn how to uh, not be uh, as righteous in my own eye, especially when it came to uh, uh, doing things the right way in the family or, or knowing, thinking I always knew what was best. And had to learn how to listen to my wife in our, early on in our marriage, and it's blessed our marriage because of that. Uh, but it says here, a fool is right in his own eyes. So we have to be careful that when we call ourselves walking with God, that it's not about just what we believe and just what we think. And, and we hold on to this is what I know. Because that's not always the case with God. God continually show us different things and different ways 
when we're walking with him. Another thing I want you to look at is Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. I want you to turn over there with me. Watch what the Bible says here. Ephesians 2, verse 2. Right, we'll start with verse number 1. And you he made alive who were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who, who now works in the sons of disobedience. So I want you to, to, to see here what God is saying. He says, he made you alive. Who were dead in your trespasses and sins. We, we were all dead in our trespasses and sins before we could even ask God for our help. Christ died for us. Before we could do anything for, to, to, to fix ourselves. For without Christ, we could not. For without Christ, we would still be dead in our trespasses and sins. But he made us alive. And then in verse 2, he says, In which you once walked according to the course of this world. Do you not realize and we not know that every one of us, not some of us, for the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 10, Romans 10, 23. Do we not know that we've all are, are naughty by nature? Yeah, y'all thought Tresh gave y'all that name. But we were all naughty by nature in the sense that we were, we, we've been this way. We learned how to be wrong. We learned how to walk against the will of God. And so he's in which you once walked according to the course of this world. The devil will lead you astray. The devil has blessings that he would give you for walking with him and not walking with God. And what I, what I, what I want you to think about tonight is that not only would the devil lead you astray and have you uh, not walking with God, but he also would fix it where the things that he gives you look so much like the blessings of God, because he's a copycat, y'all. Looks so much like the blessings of God that you, he would have you fooled enough that you would think God is the one blessing you. Because the Bible says the devil is the God of this world. And he can bless you with some things here. He did the same thing with Jesus in Matthew. He tempted Jesus. He told him all the things he could give him. But Jesus would not bite. He would not take the bait. And neither can we take the bait. But we have to understand that the devil is crafty. The devil is cunning. And the devil will try to get you any way that he can. Because he wants you to walk with him and not walk with God. And so, now we want to look at a couple of things here tonight. On walking with God. And why you should walk with God. One reason why is walking with God is safe. You know, walking with God is the safe path. It's the safe way. And there may be some things that you may not like when you have to walk with God, but it's always going to be the safe way because God's always going to be looking out for you. He's always going to have your best interests at heart. He's always going to make sure that all things work together for your good. He's always going to make sure that you come through smelling like a rose. He's always going to make sure that no matter how you go through the fiery furnace, no matter how you press down, no matter how you look, he's going to make sure you come out shining like gold. So it's always safe to walk with God. We look at uh, Proverbs chapter 14 and in verse number 12. It tells us there is a way which seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. See, if you, if you, if you walk with Satan, the end is going to be death. The end is going to be destruction. Death here not only means uh, death, your physical body separating from your spirit, but it also means a separation from God. And so that's not a safe place to be. That's what Satan wants you to be. I said before that the Bible says in Romans 10, 23, that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible also tells us that the wages of sin is death. And so when we sin, God has a right to punish us at that moment because that's the wage of sin. That's the wages you pay for your sin. But God doesn't do that. Satan wants to destroy you. 
Satan wants to take you out. Satan wants to, to, to destroy your family, destroy your relationships. He wants to destroy everything about you. So it's not safe to walk with Satan. It's safe to walk with God. Pro, uh, Psalm chapter 18 and then verse number 30. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of Jehovah is tried. He is a shield unto all them that take refuge in him. So tonight I want you to realize that it's safe to walk with God because God is a shield. God is a refuge. God is safe. He, he protects us from the storms, from the elements, from everything that we're going through. Even what we're going through right now, God is our shelter. God is our peace. God is our refuge. He's, he's our everything, our all in all. And he's, it's always safe to walk with him. So no matter what you go through, the devil wants you to, to turn your back on God. The devil wants you to give up on God. The devil wants you to, to, to lose your hope in God. I don't want you to do that. I want you to understand that walking with God is safety. That's your safety net. That's your rescue valve. That's, that's your relief point. God would always take care of you. Walking with God is safe. And the Bible says in Galatians 5, 16, that we must walk in the spirit. So in walking with God, I know that I need to walk in the spirit. I know that I need to be walking in tune with God and who he is and what, he, what he's telling me. Another scripture I wanted to look at, we was in Ephesians 2 a while ago, verse number 2. I want to look at Ephesians 2.10. And watch what he says here. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 10. The Bible says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Let's read that again together. I'm reading from the New King James Version, so you all may read it a little bit different depending on what version you're reading from. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God never asked us what we thought about his plan for mankind. God never asked us what we thought about what he should do about the church. God never asked us what he thought we should even do about our families. For God knows what's good. We are his workmanship created for good works. Do you not realize that when we walk with God, do you not realize that God's created us to do good work? He didn't create us to do bad things. So whenever we do bad things, whenever we do things that's not pleasing to God, whenever we do things contrary to the word of God, to, through the ordinance of God, through the commands of God, we do things contrary to what God created us to be because he created us to be good. He created us to do good for we are his workmanship. And then it says he prepared it beforehand that we should walk in them. That's the way we should be walking in good things. And then lastly, uh, tonight we wanted to look at uh, to walk with God, we must be in agreement with him. To walk with God, we must be in agreement with him. The Bible says in Amos 3 and 3, how can two walk together unless they agree? So we have to learn to agree with God. And that means sometimes we got to humble ourselves. That means that sometimes that we're not necessarily, we don't, we may not necessarily like what it is that God is telling us to do. We not, may not necessarily like what it is God is telling us how to be. We may not necessarily like God telling us and chastising us, but we have to learn how to be in agreement with him in order to walk with him. Let's look at John chapter 1, 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. I'll give you time to turn over there with me. 
First John chapter 1, 5 through 7. Let's see what the Bible says here about being in agreement and walking with God. This is the message which we have heard from, the, from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. And so, so here John is letting us know that if we say we are walking with God and we're walking in darkness, we, we are, and, and, and let's understand something. Someone discord in the church, that's darkness. Saying that Christ didn't come and die for our sins as they did in, in the New Testament when Paul and them were trying to preach, that's darkness. Apostasy, the falling away, that's darkness. Walking disorderly in the church, that's darkness. Not treating our spouses correct, that's darkness. Not giving the way we're supposed to give and giving back to God, that's darkness. So any sin that we find ourselves in, we're walking in darkness, not in the light. And God says, if you say that you have fellowship with him, but you're walking in darkness, then you become a lie. Why? Because God cannot handle darkness. God does not deal with darkness. In Genesis, when God, the Bible said that the earth was void and dark was on, hovering over all the face of the earth. What did God do? The Bible says God created light. Why? Because God cannot be what darkness is. And, and, and if we use, the, the, if we use uh, our own intellect and our own simple way of thinking that even a first grader or a second grader or a third grader can understand, probably even a kindergarten, is that if you walk into a room and it's midnight and all the lights are off and no, no light can come in from the windows or anything else. And there's pure darkness in that room. What happens when you turn the switch on? Does the darkness stay there and, and, and mix with the light or does the darkness disappear? What happens if you turn the switch back off? Does the light stay there and intermix with the darkness or does the light disappear? God says that oil and water cannot mix. God does not mix light and dark. Therefore, John is letting us know that if we are walking disorderly, if we, if we are, are, are sowing discord, if we, if we are doing anything against the kingdom of God, then God wants us to know that you have no fellowship with me. And so it's important that we understand that. He also goes on and says in verse number six, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we just read that. Verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light and have fellowship with one another, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all of our sins. And th this is something we're going to end with right here because I, I think we need to understand this and what God really means. Um, he says in verse 7, if we walk in the light as he is in the light. So we just talked about that light and darkness. And we just talked about how that if, if darkness is there, light can't be there. And if light shows up, darkness has to disperse. And so we talked about that. And we understand that from, like I said, the light switch, right? You cut it on, darkness goes away. Cut it off, darkness comes back. Because light and dark, can't, they can't occupy the same space. But watch what he says. As he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all of our sins. When we walk in the light of God and we walk with him, it helps us maintain fellowship with one another. Even when things are not good, when things are not, not, not favorable, it helps us maintain our fellowship. And that's how we understand that the blood of Jesus continually cleanses us of all of our sins. Because I walk in the light when God showed me I'm wrong, I, I repent, I move on, and he cleanses me. And I continue having fellowship with my brothers 
in Christ. So it's all about our fellowship with God, with Christ, and with one another. And so walking with God. I want us to realize this evening that uh, the devil tries you, the devil tried to twist and turn you. Right now he's trying to discourage people and pull them away from God. And he, he's trying to uh, get you to turn your back on the church. He's trying to get you to turn your back on uh, um, mankind. He's trying to get you to turn your back on everything. He wants you to be defeated right now. But I stop by to tell you that don't allow the devil to win. Keep walking with God because it's safe. Keep walking with God because it, it's sure. Keep walking with God because it's the right thing to do to make heaven your home and to have fellowship with one another in Christ Jesus. Amen. May God bless you and may God keep you. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity we have to come and pray to you, and Lord, we pray we never take that for granted. Father, we pray and ask you that you will lead us and guide us and direct us and direct our hearts. We pray, Lord God, if we study on this lesson and meditate on walking with you, dear Lord God, that you will speak to our spirits and our souls, dear Lord. We pray and ask you, Father, that if we uh, meditate, dear Lord, that you, we will grow, draw strength from your word. We pray, Father, it will help us to be better in the future than we have been in the past. We pray, Lord God, it will help us understand how to walk more uh, in tune with you and who you are. We pray, Lord God, asking you to forgive us for our sins and shortcomings. And we ask that you will always strengthen us as we go through uh, this uh, pandemic that we're going through. Strengthen us, dear Lord, and keep us encouraged. Help us to lean on one another and always encourage one another. Lord, this is our prayer. And this is our ask, and we ask it in your loving son Jesus' name. Amen.